Well, here we go. We have to get the nasties out of the way. When we talk money or other topics with YouTube or any other social media, you need or we need to put a disclaimer out there that I am not giving advice for you to act on. Always consult a professional, licensed fiduciary manager, a money manager. I am giving you entertainment on showing how to learn about certain topics in regards to money. I'm not responsible for what you do with your money. I not manage your money. I don't manage anybody's money except my own. So don't I'm not a licensed fiduciary. Before I start this next section, I want to be clear that I'm a firm believer that before you start trading stocks, make sure you have significant cash. How do you get that significant cash? I would say your first 10,000, maybe 20, I would go first 10,000 minimum, put in an index fund. You can put it in the Vanguard 500, top 500 index fund. These, there's quite a few of them out there. You got VFINX, which is a standard on how the S&P has done. It mirrors that performance. FX, FXAIX is also another index fund. They try to mimic the S&P. One is a little bit better than the other and depends, but um, that that's what you do if you don't have $10,000. I want to be perfectly clear. If you're 20... Could you go into stocks? And yes, but in my opinion, go with an index fund. Get that money, get it to grow, and then buy your first stock. I'm not saying that's the only way to do it. I'm saying, in my opinion, that's the safest way to do it. So with that, let's get on to the real session here. All righty. Well, welcome to this session of dollars and cents. Not cents like pennies, but common sense. Trying to come up with a format. First of all, let me apologize for the background. I've got about 15 to 20 minutes. I'm not going to set up the green screen, go through all that. I'm just too lazy in the time. i got about 20 minutes here to sneak this in. Like I said in my other videos, uh, time's valuable right now and I'm slowing down on the YouTube. I don't want to lose traction, but I, as time allows, I'll try to sneak this out. With that, I'm going to try to get this done in 15 to 20 minutes. Hopefully it's a little bit faster paced. Second, let me get some coffee and get the vocal cords uh, lubricated here. <clears throat> here we go on the fly, unedited. Well, it will be edited, but... <laughs> First of all, let's start with uh, the S&P. We had a double top and we were looking at possibly a triple top. And what we ended up seeing is just recently, I'm not going to say it's a breakout, but we've reached new highs. I'm taking this as very bullish. We know the Fed just cut 50 basis, which is half a percentage. 25 basis would be a quarter of 1%, um, if you're not familiar with the term basis. Um, so, yeah, we had a 50-point basis cut. And I've been looking at homes and talking to realtors, and they are so busy right now up here in Alaska, a lot of them uh, aren't even returning my calls, which I've never, I don't think they're that rude. I think they're that busy. So, quick look at the at the graph here you can see the top the top arrow hitting a new high on the candlesticks there and in the middle you can see the bullish MACD that circle there in, um, below the arrow and you can see the very RSI the bottom blue line uh, you can see the oversold level that's kind of where I expect it to go we're getting close but we're not there yet um, I'm expecting once we get close to that green line on the oversold that we'll probably see a pullback. You want an exact date? Go ahead and laugh at this one. October 5th. <laughs> There's a date for you. I don't know. It's uh, October 
typically uh, we see a lot of rearrangements of portfolios, and I don't think it's, I, I'm seeing it, uh, but not in a big way. It's subtle, so it's hard to distinguish. Um, there's ways to do it, uh, of who's buying and who's selling and all that. You can see the major buys. I uh, see a lot of option, big options out there, but I'm rambling. Let's get on to the second topic here. We all know what a bullish S&P index means, right? We're probably going higher, short term. So let's look at uh, Pfizer. We know we've been looking at Pfizer for a while. And, um, boy, don't have it. Looky, I found Pfizer. Good grief, I can't believe. Well, this is what happens when you've got 15 to 20 minutes and you're trying to sneak this in. Oh, Lordy. Anyway, let's look at Pfizer. I'm mentioning Pfizer just because it was one we were using as a learning tool. And it was a dividend stock and it had great technicals to look at. Anyway, we still own this one. I wanted to show you kind of where it's at. You can see the yellow markings I put over there. If you want to stop and review this. I will say, um, as entertainment purposes only, that this stock is coming down um, on news. I'm assuming on news today, this morning. Um, it's been coming down prior to this, but today was an announcement of their drug for sickle cell that they are discontinuing it. There's been some serious health problems with people taking it, I guess even deaths. So they're pulling it off all shells. That means around the world, from what I understand. Do your own research on that one. But I expect this one to go down even lower. Um, why are we going to keep it? Well, we're ahead. And it's a dividend stock. Which brings up, I saw a question that was raised on why wouldn't you be in stocks or like if you can get a 5% CD, why wouldn't you be that instead of in a, in a stock dividend type of uh, play? And I wanted to, man, I wanted to, there's so many reasons why I prefer a stock, a good stock. There's a lot of high dividend payers out there that you should stay clear of. Do your own research. If you like high risk, that's, and you can tolerate it, you're younger, go for it. Me, I'm older. It's not about how much I make. It's about how much I can save. I don't want to lose any money. Hence, my return gets a little nerfed. I'm not that aggressive. I'm in my 60s, fast approaching 70s. I need to preserve my wealth. With that, I will still be in a dividend stock. And let me show you why I personally will be in a dividend stock. Your scenario may differ depending on your age and how long you've been in it. But let's look at... Um, let's go to Key Bank. That's one I was pushing really hard a while back and I'll try to find that video and put it up there somewhere um, yeah let's go to key bank let's um, get rid of this I'm gonna show you my financials on key bank right here you can see I bought some 130 shares on March of 23 I bought just two days later I bought what same amount, I doubled down on that 130 for a total of 260. And here on the last, close to the last of the month, the price was up at $12.69, and I still thought it was low. Guess what? I doubled down 260 from the previous 260 for a total of 520. Price dropped to 982. Guess what? I doubled down again. I had faith in this one. I really did. I got some dividend money, but what I wanted to show you here, I'll try to cut this quick and make it short. Here's my thinking on the dividend stock. In the end, after all these buying and selling and getting some dividends, here we are this month, September, and I've, with the buying and selling, I have sold enough shares that my cost basis is around 1000 thousand thirty one dollars which per share comes out to this 252 per share that's what I got in the game that's the value of these 408 
If I sold all 408, this value is what it would be. What's this? This is the money I've already taken out. I've made 5,700 and I have a thousand dollars left in the game. So if you follow along with this thinking on the buying, trading, and getting ahead, and then getting your cash back out or near, I didn't get my total, I'm leaving a thousand in there. So let's just say I went to a banker and I said, Mr. Banker, I'm going to put a deposit in the bank of a thousand dollars and I want you to give me this number right here, $334 every year. He'd laugh you out. He'd put a big sign on your back that said, kick me. Nobody in their right mind is going to do that. Now keep in mind, this dividend is only 5%, or pretty darn close, 4.9, right? But if you take this cost basis, which is my cost basis of $1,031, and I divide it by the dividend of $334 in a year. They're going to give that dividend four times a year. So what would that be? Half would be 150, 160, roughly. Some change, 160. So it'd be $80. $80 every three months I get. But anyway, over the year, I would get that 344. That in reality is a 40% return on this thousand dollars that I leave in that bank account. 40%. Now, it's not a huge amount. I mean, if I sold everything, it's worth $6,000, right? So if you want to think of it that way, that there's still $6,000 or 6800 in there, you can. But this is why I do the funny math of what I actually got in the game. I got this 1000 you know, click on it, or here, this one. I've got $1,031 of my money still invested in this. Yes, it's worth more, but this is why we play this game. Now, I'm looking at growing. Every time I get a dividend, I'm going to get about eight shares, eventually nine, eventually ten, every quarter. So 40 shares a year. This is going to grow. This 1031 my, this, the money I got in the game, it's a done deal. I've, I'm not touching it. Let it. It's $1,000. It's done. This 40% per year is only going to get bigger. Are you following my thinking? This is why all these in green, not all of them, like Axon, it doesn't pay a dividend. There's nothing in it. But this is why I like my green stocks so well, especially if they're dividend payers. AT&T is one I'm working on right now. Here's my money. Can I, if this thing doubles in price and I say, well, I want to take 1030 out divided by whatever the share is, I but that's, let me give you an example of where I goofed up. IRM. Here's my total shares and buys on that one. I made enough money on that one that I, neg they would have to pay me 3800 and some dollars, right? To get to zero. Just to break even. They owe me money. I've I've taken so much money, and I still have two thousand. If I sold everything, I still they'd pay me, you know, the two thousand there. Where did I goof up? Well, right here, right here. I had three hundred and sixty-one dollars in the game. I should have stopped selling, but I. Go it got, went up higher, and I'm like, man, I take a few shares off. So I took 50 off there. I took another 30 off there. I took another 15 there. So what is that? 95 shares. I took 95 on top of my 19. There've been 100 shares. Granted, it's not great money, but with that amount of shares. I kick myself every day for selling. This is the thing people don't think about. This is why you keep track of your money. You've got to think about it. You've got to be religious, at least weekly, truing up your bank account numbers, the stock prices. This is a byproduct. So why would you put money in 
a CD that's even paying 8%. Well, again, it's going to probably, in this scenario, 20 years from now, if I'm still alive, this will still be paying if the company's in business. Now, if you can get something in a treasury bill or something that's 20 years out, 30 years, yeah, it's safe, theoretically. Nothing's ever safe, right? Government could collapse and, you know, we'll all be in that, that same boat. You can't think about the end-of-the-world scenarios. You can't. But this, I really wanted to point this out, and this is a good example right here. 40% return. It's not a huge amount of money, right? But it's decent money. If you can get one or two or three of these, four, just keep building. One a year for the rest of your life. If that's all you get, one of these a year. Think what that's going to do for you. And that dividend is only going to get bigger, right? As long as that company's... All you got to really worry about is not the price of the stock. You just need to worry about the business. Is it still going to be profitable? Is it still going to be... Your cost basis is two. What's at risk? What will you lose? Well, the biggest, biggest risk on a dividend stock is they stop paying the dividend. So what do you have to worry about on a dividend stock? Two things. Two things that will ruin your day. One, you need to keep track of that company weekly. I'd say weekly. Let's just say weekly. At least quarterly. But you need to keep track of the business's financials. I.e., are they doing okay? That will be your first sign if that company is doing well and can sustain the dividend. So that's number one, the dividend stock that you got to watch. Number two is when they cut the dividend. Number one is your hint that they may have to say, you know what, we can't keep paying the dividend because we're losing too much money. Our expenses are too high. We need, we need to quit paying these people all this money. That's what will hurt the biggest on a dividend stock. So is there risk on a dividend stock versus a CD? Yes. Higher gains, theoretically, with more risk. That's your trade-off. Are you happy with money sitting there and you don't have to worry about it and you're getting 2% or 3% in a CD or a treasury bond? That's only you can decide, right? That's, that's the catch But why would you, especially in your younger years, be in a bond or a treasury bill or a CD? It's safe. You absolutely need this money for something. Absolutely. You got something, a student loan, you got you got plans for that money, and you have to have it. I get it. This is questions that people bring up and answers that I don't have, and a lot of people claim they do have. Only you can make those decisions. But dividend stocks will pay more. Invest in a well financial uh, run company. What am I trying to say here? The uh the your um Top paying dividend stocks. I can't even think what they're called. The dividend, uh, huh. That's horrible. This is what I get for going on the fly. When I edit this, I'll post it up there. But uh, there's like the top 100 dividend payers that, uh, aristoc the dividend aristoc aristocrats. Um, that's what it is. You can look at those and see how long they've been paying. Some have been paying for 50 years, maybe longer they are guaranteed that they're probably going to pay. Those are well-run companies and have continued. doesn't mean one bad CEO gets in there and there goes your dividend. So take it for what it is. There is risk with a dividend stock. There's always risk. It's a company. Government has risks on a treasury. Can they pay it? They probably can borrow it, but there's, there's risk in all investments, you need to decide your risk versus reward. 
my risk, even at, I'm in my 60s. I'm going to take this and probably anything that's a good dividend payer, I'm not going to sell all that kind of stuff and go, no, I, in my mind, it might be only $1,000 at risk. But in my mind, that money is going to continually grow and compound. Not as fast as a growth company like NVIDIA or Apple or somebody like that. Their growth. They keep making money and they double their company size. That That's true growth. Growth will always outstrip the dividend payers, right? In my opinion. But if you have a few of these at your 20, 25, and you look back in your 60s, this simple strategy, you're going to be amazed at what you have. I wish I would have started sooner. I'm going to leave you with this. Just some quick thoughts and some scenarios. I could talk all this stocks and money and all that all day long. Hope you do well. The market's ripe. We'll get past this election. Hope you have a game plan. Till next time. That's how you get hurt on a dividend stock. That's your risk. So the only thing you need to worry about is, one, is the company financially sound? If they're showing signs of in trouble, it might be time to bail. Take your excess cash that you got, get out of it, find another one. Two. Two. What's two? <laughs>